good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yoakum. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to walk you through uh, today's discussion. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we have a specific theme, including emerging topics such as soil health, plant genetics, vertical farming, and aquaculture, to name a few. This month's theme is precision agriculture. And on today's call, we're joined by Acre Technology CEO, Orlando Saez, and business development lead, Sharon Burbridge. Acre is the premier partner for agricultural retailers and suppliers who are in need for the most valuable data-driven field insights. Overhead, under the canopy, and even down to the soil line, Acre provides nationwide reliable, actionable crop health and pest maps that drive financially smart treatment decisions. The company's automated technology delivers location-specific data, visualization tools, robust diagnostics, and under the canopy sensors, they capture crop stressors. Now, each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We invite you to this call because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Acres market. You are potential customers for Acres products and services. You have built a company similar to Acre, or you are a sophisticated business person or agricultural professional who understands the market and the challenges and opportunities Acre may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. A few process comments while that poll is running. We are not soliciting investment. This presentation is, is to provide information to help Acre find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships to help them grow their business. Secondly, you are all on mute. You can use the chat window to ask a question at any time. And finally, this presentation is, this presentation is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce Orlando Saez and Sharon Burbridge of Acre Technologies. Orlando and Sharon, please feel free to take it away. Thank you, David. Appreciate the opportunity and hi, Sharon. Hi, Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so brief introduction. My name is Orlando Saez. I'm the co-founder and CEO. Sharon, do you want to do a quick intro? Yeah, I'm Sharon Burbridge. I'm the business development lead. I'm new to Acre this year, but not new with iSelect. Good. So a bit of my background, I started my career as a software engineer, unlike uh, Sharon has been for many decades in the ag space. My background is a software geek in the telecommunications industry. I've been very lucky to be a C-level executive in two companies that went public. I've been very fortunate to be in agriculture for the last six years, and I even lived in a farm for several of those years in southern Minnesota, Winnebago, where I met my co-founder, who's a very progressive and phenomenal farmer. Before diving into the details, let me summarize what we do. And the slides that you see in front of you have a lot of words because you can read offline. I'll be talking about the highlights to make it easy for you. But in essence, Acre created a technology and a method that autonomously captures above and below canopy plant data that we can scale. And then we combine this this data set, our own, with other farm data to assess the efficiency of inputs, particularly crop protection, to increase the engagement of growers by demonstrating which, how, and when these inputs perform best. So that's a highlight. And the other highlight is, you know, we use machine learning and edge computing related to how do we tell the story? We like to call it more understanding persuasion science and kind of creating opportunities to have the growers really understand what works in the field. Let me show you a quick video. Let's see if I can share this. I'll narrate a little bit better. A picture is always very powerful. About three years ago, we invented true costs. We have a patent, a utility patent around this. It takes pictures and environmental measurements. First, the user defines a scouting zone in a field, as you normally would do. That's the image. When the order comes in, we dispatch pilots anywhere in the country to visit the fields um, is a service model. Our nationwide fleet delivers 95% of what we collect within 24 hours. So in, that, in, this, in this particular structure, that's how we do it. Similar to our Roomba vacuum cleaner, the drone goes out there and normally goes every two and a half acre grid or directed by a satellite image. And then we lower the probe under the plant to capture environmental indicators at three heights, normally the bottom of the row crop, grain and tassel, all this is custom and at the top. Then from an agronomic perspective, we capture a number of indicators. I just wanna pause so you can see it better. Three cameras in different directions. We capture everything that we can see with the eye. 
temperature, humidity, O2, CO2, everything that the agronomists really love to get to be able to understand conditions in the field. Then we take this data that comes in, which is very abundant, as you can imagine, because we're walking the fields uh, with the technology. And we load that into our platform. And then we use machine learning and AI to be able to translate the, that information to make better recommendations. And then finally, this gets downloaded into the equipment to load prescription for spraying and other aspects of technology. I'm sure that everybody who's in agriculture here can relate. Uh, this is a very intense demand and response for the field. So we work every day to make this process as automated and as seamless as possible. Let me go back to this. Sharon, help me make sure that you can see my screen. Let me give you a sense of the competition. I think that's important. This is a highly fragmented market. Uh, you have ground robots, you have drones, you have satellite, you have many other alternatives. So it's very abundant. In general, what we like to think is there's a direct relationship between the costs of collecting data, sending somebody out there to do anything, and the quality of that field knowledge. On one side, you have satellite, which is cheap, but it's low resolution. So it doesn't have a lot of insight. And the other side, you have a probes and something that you put in the ground, which is highly effective, but you cannot scale that because it requires a significant amount of infrastructure capital to do that. We believe that our technology and method combines the optimal unit cost with the best timing and resolution compared to other providers. And that's where we, where we sit. The market has responded posit positive in terms of what we've been doing for the last three years. We have good traction, particularly around chemical manufacturers. We've been recognized as an innovator by several ag tech and clean tech organizations. We've raised today about $6 million. We have two institutional investors in our cap table. One is Lewis and Clark Ventures, a fantastic group in St. Louis. Uh, Larry Page is on our board. And Flyover Capital in Kansas City. And uh, Flyover invested in a company called Agrable that they sold to Nutrient. And Keith Molser is in, my, in our board. We also have participation by Thrive in the West Coast, where we're doing some specialty crops. And Sharon is very familiar with that. And Clean Energy Trust. I want to talk about some highlights that I think could be very important. And it's just to kind of frame a number of things. First, the market. I think it's important, again, to kind of relate. We don't sell our technology to growers directly. We, we, we operate in a very large addressable market, primarily led by crop protection inputs. In the U.S., manufacturers spend over $3 million, billion, I'm sorry, in the marketing of inputs and globally actually more than eight. We, we are essentially a marketing cost where instead of putting to the grower a jetty cooler or steak dinners and mashed potatoes, we do a lot of on-farm trials to kind of prove to the grower that the inputs that the chemical providers are trying to make the case that it works, indeed, is actually performing the way that it should. So we accelerate the adoption. So we're, we're more storytellers. So it's a big addressable market, $9 billion. Let me be more granular here. Chemical manufacturers have been advocating for a long time that fungicide it's a big deal and it's, it makes a positive ROI. However, if you ask anybody about the adoption, it's about 25%. So 25% of all the fields across the country are regularly uh, treated with fungicide. However, many scientists agree that about 50% of all the fields can have a positive ROI. So the question is why the adoption is not more. Our experience is the following. Fungicide doesn't consistently work in every scenario. Therefore, binary, growers take a binary position to adoption of fungicide. They either apply or don't. It's, there's no in between. Our technology conveys the necessity of fungicide for growers, which accelerates the sales of the suppliers. We match the right problem in the field with the right products on the shelf. And making that connection is very important for our customers. This is why, you know, BSF, you know, we work with chemical suppliers, but BSF has, has chosen Acre to conduct the largest on-farm trial of its kind, where we are driving the efficacy of a fungicide called Revisol. We conducted the largest on-farm trial. We've, we, we, we've done over 2,000 on-farm trials throughout the country, where we go and visit those before application, after application, anywhere in the country with our fleet. And... I'll invite you to actually go to our website that we design, commission, and currently host for them, which is just all the, of the merchandising called revexfield.com. And uh, we can talk more about it in the Q&A if you want to know more about what, what our work is related to that. This is just one use case of our technology, which is the input marketing 
We think that the top line is uh, over $100 million. If you overlay things that relate to research acceleration, working with retailers, or risk management and yield prediction, we're well over $200 million in top line that we think that we can scale. You mentioned something a little more about you know, how we see our technology. We see our technology complementary. We're not a solution that the customer talks to us and nobody else. We're more of a plug-in. And so since the beginning, for us, it's been very important to work automation, quality, and edge computing and machine learning so that when we send the drone and a staff from our perspective, we can collect the data without having to repeat going out to the field. That's why we have high SLAs and our customers are happy to continue to work with us. So we put a lot of effort in terms of how to make sure that our, our technology is reliable in doing field collection in a very accurate way. Again, I think I mentioned this, but we have a patent, a utility patent related to the drone collection where we've uh, integrated a number of sensors. All these sensors are off the shelf, by the way. We're not building new sensors. We're not doing new indication. It's just a utility on how to manage a, a sensor unit attached to any particular piece. That can be to a drone. We've tested and we're trying things on a water pivot. It can be in a hand probe. So it's, it, it's, it's not just for the drone. It has more modalities that we can attach this. We're working we're, we're headquarters in the Danford Plant Science Center, which is the world's largest NGO for plant science, as many of you are familiar. And we have a good understanding of customer needs to translate a number of different things that we can attach in terms of sensors into our probe to be more meaningful and drive more value to our customers. I think I mentioned earlier, and it begs repeating, we work in a very large ecosystem where we're not the solution, we're part of the solution, which is what we're looking for investment. We are a service provider, and there are many things that relate to the circle of love that growers need. They need to collect data. We need to aggregate data and clean data. We need to do prescription. There's merchandising, and there's the system integration. In several of these components, we have core competencies that nobody else can do, and that's what we differentiate. In the collection side, in the, in the merchandising aspect, we think that we have something that is very unique for the marketplace. And we're looking to connect with partners as I select you know, a network to be able to understand how we can drive more value with our partners for the grow for the benefit of the growers. Close, let me share a little bit more here related to ROI, and I'm happy to talk more about this. You know, at the end of the day, what we create is not just value for our suppliers, but it has to accrue value to the grower. We think that that value can accrue over five times the investment that they that they that they make in, in the technology directly or indirectly. The growers don't pay when we collect because that's actually the supplier, but eventually trickles down to the grower. And so, and we do that by um, the way that we approach the market and our pricing. And we are excited about that. It's a lot cheaper to send uh, a drone with what we do rather than a scout, a person. With BSF, we continue to experience uh, revenue growth and, and particularly uh, around the COVID year, if you will, last year. And so we have a number of customers that are, that are large brands, as you can see here. And uh, we're excited to continue to work with, uh, with these customers and, and, and continue to grow. We have about 13 full-time employees, 30 total. Uh, we do between contractors. The majority of our staff is uh, located in um, St. Louis, Missouri. We love it, Midwest. And uh, if you ask my team and Sharon and everybody else what they say about Orlando, I have a lot of energy. I, I traded telecommunication, a data center to Sunshine. I'm not going back. Our team, we're scrappy. We are, we are primarily scientists and engineer. That's the bulk of our team, just so you know. Uh, a little bit on the financial side, and I think I mentioned this, but we've experienced growth since the inception of the company. We have good profit margins on a unit economics basis, on a unit cost for a service company and a SaaS company, which we think it's uh, powerful. And uh, as we continue to grow with our next investment, we know that we can turn into EBITDA profit or even the positive within the next couple of years. That's my presentation. I'll leave it at that. And I welcome your questions and I sincerely thank you for your time. Thanks so much, Orlando. Really interesting and exciting to see all the progress that Acre has made over the last couple of years and a really comprehensive technology platform that you guys have built. It seems like you can do a lot of different things. As Orlando mentioned, if you have questions, now's a great time to ask them. The best way to ask a question is to type your question into the Q&A box. 
and I, I will answer those questions in, in the order that they are received. But I'll, I'll kick things off while everyone's sort of thinking about their questions initially. You know, when I think about solutions like this that have a huge capacity to capture unique data for an extremely under-digitized industry, there's a lot of different ways that that can go and be valorized. From sort of day one, what is, what is sort of the one thing that your customers are typically screaming out for that is the most actionable piece, the most actionable thing that they can do with data that you're collecting that they previously couldn't do before? I think our customers want confirmation about their decision. Either growers or suppliers are saying, geez, I want to be certain that the decision that I'm about to make, whether it's purchasing a, a product, an input, or selling one if I'm a supplier, they want confidence that the decision that they're making is valid. And one of the things that they struggle with is understanding that there's a lot of microclimate within a field to understand whether that decision is well-informed based on the tools that they have today. So today they go to a corner of the field, a headline, and they collect data and they say, spray the whole thing or don't spray at all. That's an insufficient way to do ground truthing. And the tools that are exist today, which is from high above, which is satellite and airplanes, they're not good enough to tell you what the heck is happening inside the field. So the number one thing that growers appreciate about what we bring is better storytelling about what the heck is going on inside my fields. Thanks, Orlando. With kind of, kind of dovetailing off of that, so one of the things that's unique about Acre is your ability to capture data below the canopy, which is something that a lot of other types of technologies can't do. Either they can do it in, in a standstill form by a sensor that stands in the field, or they can do something that is above the canopy, but is making estimations about what might be happening inside the canopy. Can you just talk about just how meaningful that below the canopy data set is and how unique that is and, and what, kind, it, what kinds of information you can capture that, that weren't previously available through that specific sensor piece? Well, so the first thing is that you can capture grid uh, across two and a half acres, which is something that is nearly impossible for a, a crop scout to go and walk the field that way. You can't, you have to select and be very choosy about where you go. The second thing is we collect, you know, pictures and environmental images that enhances what I would call for the grower, the source of truth. If you have satellite, it gives you a stress indicator, but it doesn't tell you why there's a stress. So the real punchline for what we bring to the grower is a more confident definition of the source of truth of what's happening in the field. The way I like to refer to it is we package bad news beautifully. And that's something that resonates with the grower. For suppliers though, it's a little bit different. They have amazing chemistry. And when they deploy the chemistry, they do testing in research farms. And the number of farms that they test the product before it goes out is very small. They do a test plot in a couple of places. We provide an indication to all the research you know, guys and our supplier customers with better understanding of the attribution. Why did a product work? Why didn't it work? There is a lot of story and understanding that we help the folks that are in product marketing or in the research to be able to get the, our data back so that they can understand better how their product or why it worked a certain way and why it didn't. And I think that's yeah. the attachment of our technology. Can I, add, can I add to something on that? Because there's another group of customers that we've recently started to engage with that are sort of what we call the trusted advisors and the, the crop consultant industry. And they've really recognized what True Cause can do. There's actually crops like tree crops that you cannot see the top of the canopy physically from the ground. And so that's, that's I think, of another very important use case and really distinguishes Acre from other crop scouting technologies. Thanks, Sharon. That's a good point. One thing I'm curious about is I'm sure you have, how do you think about being a data source versus being an, in, an insight engine? So I'm sure there are instances in which you are the initial solution for somebody who hasn't, who maybe, maybe they've adopted 
a digital solution before maybe they haven't. But you also listed like Zarvio as a customer who might be somebody who has a platform that they're, they're, they're deploying to a huge pool of customers and they have their own engine by which they're bringing data together to help people make decisions. How do you sort of weigh those two aspects of the business? And are there certain, are you more excited about being a data provider? Are you more excited about being a platform for decision-making in and of itself? I think it's a little bit of both. I don't, I, we, we see ourselves more as Lego blocks and our customers pick and choose how to create something. There's no two retailers that are the same. No two growers are the same. No two suppliers are the same. So how, when, and they use our Lego blocks pieces varies. But I will tell you that it, it breaks out to two, there's two factions. One group is, I need it now, I need to know this, and I don't have tools, I don't have a digital dashboard. So we come up with something quick and dirty, I call it the Twitter. So we have, here's a report, you know, kind of like easy button. And so we have merchandising tools for that. So we're a destination for those customers that want a quick report to see how they can actually operate. The other side is, like you said, with Sarvio and with other companies, we're more of a data source, we're the feel engine, data collection, mm -hmm. that we do some interpretation in the derivative so that it can be ingested in their system so that they can improve primarily crop and pest models to do better prediction. Part of what all of these companies that ingest our data want is to go beyond weather models. Everything that we predict is based on weather models and yield maps, historically. Now they're using our data to actually say, we can actually be better in terms of how do we do prediction because of the layer and the alpha of our data that we provide to them. Got it. Thanks, Rolando. We have a question from the audience. The question is, I believe you said you have 13 full-time employees. How many full-time employees will you need to reach revenue numbers in three years, um, the ones that were projected on the slide? And then relative to the drones, what skill set is needed and how available are people with this skill set? Okay, I'm going to ask you to repeat the, third, the second part of that question. What's the second uh, part? Yeah, so the first question is about how many people you need to hire to yes, hit you for three years. And then the second one is, I think it's relative to the drones UAVs that you're deploying. What skill set is needed to either, I, I think they're thinking okay. versus I got it. how available is that skill set? So, so, you know, relative to other companies, and again, I, I, will, I will encourage you to do the math. You know, we are generating top line over a million dollars with 13 people. Uh, so I think relative to other comparable companies in the industry, I and mean, we've raised $6 million. We are very efficient, I think, in terms of capital and how we drive value and productivity with our employees. In three years, I don't think that the principle of that is gonna change. So I think we're gonna be in three to four years, we'll probably top at, I, I wanna say 30 people, 30, 40 employees a month at the top. The rest is going to be more working with a um, ecosystem of pilots and field scouts throughout the world, if we can, to be able to syndicate the value of our technology through that particular population. On the second question, what's the skill set of a, of a pilot, if you will, or somebody in the field? Drone technology and the way that we approach it is, is an industrial strength drone. I don't want to say it's a commodity. We don't build a drone, by the way. We assemble it, but we're relying on third-party providers to do that. So it's relatively easy to pilot, and it's autonomous, meaning the only thing that the field scout needs to be concerned when they go to the field is put a battery, plug it in, launch it, and watch it. Done. The drone does everything. There is not a lot of technical know-how other than it comes back, and you need to upload the data to the cloud, and then you keep going. So it's really a, um, a collect get out of the pickup truck, launch the drone, go to the next one, do the same and repeat. All right. All right. Thanks, Orlando. Mm -hmm. One further question just on crop type and, and sort of how that, it seems like you guys can service specialty and commodity in a way that a lot of, I think others are, are more segmented on. So I think we've seen a lot of solutions that really go towards only specialty or they're doing ag and ag R&D. seems like you guys are straddling both of those those categories. Can you talk about just why you're able to do that? And is, is it easy to do both of those areas? And are, are there certain where you're more applicable than others? We, so we started in row crops by accident of where we come from. And, and so the, the, the way that we like to think about it is we go where there is a big gap between land that needs to be watched and people who are available to watch it or the frequency that you need to examine that. 
And so from that principle, we started in row crops, but we of late have moved into specialty crop because those crops need a lot more quality and compliance. And the partners that we work with don't have enough people to be able to do that. And maybe Sharon, you want to elaborate a little more on this specialty side. Yeah, in fact, in Washington state, in California, those, those crops have to be scouted. And in those states, they have to have an actual report from a crop scout or some reason to spray a field. So they actually have to do crop scouting. And I've, I've talked to some of the grower institute grower associations up in Washington state, and they are having a hard time getting enough scouts, particularly for orchards up there. And in fact, there's a group in Washington state that's funding research to help make smart orchards so that this scouting technology can actually be used across the millions of acres of orchards and acres actually participating in that. So there's probably, you know, some, there's millions and millions of acres that, that need our technology and specialty crops. Got it. Well, I'm gonna pause here for a moment to see if there's any further questions from the audience before we start to wrap things up here today. Well, seeing that there are none, Orlando and Sharon, what are some things that the audience can do to help you and, and how can they reach you? We wanna to talk to you. We are new at this, even though we are six years for me going, four years in, the, in, in this particular journey, but there's a lot that we still want to learn. We want to learn from folks that are, who are growers and others are connected with the land. That is an important bias that we need to keep. We need to talk to people that understand the tipping point of what change behavior is necessary. We've learned that for retailers and growers, they don't buy math. Even if you have an ROI solution, that by itself is not enough learning the conditions of the market and working with smart people in the, in the industry is incredibly powerful for us. And then we are, you know, as we level up, some of the things that we're working is increasing our distribution through other partners that can take us to other markets, including Brazil, which is a big one, and Europe in terms of compliance for what we do. And uh, the way that you can reach us is uh, www.acre.ag happy to have you share our email with the rest of the network so that they can reach us anytime and please come talk to us we'd love to hang out excellent thanks Orlando thanks Sharon and uh and thanks oh sure did you want to add something no I just said thank you okay. <laughs> yeah acre, uh, acre .ag. Um, yeah. And there's a, a contact button that comes right into my email perfect well Orlando and Sharon thank you so much for joining us today um and congratulations on all the progress to date I'd also like to thank the audience for your active participation today. For anybody who is new to this, we host these calls every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time. You can register for AgriFood Conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. I mean, if you know somebody who'd like to listen to this webinar, please feel free to share it with them directly as a replay of the webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. They can also just go to agrifoodconversations.com and, and register there. Or otherwise, thanks again, Sharon. Thanks again to Orlando and, and have a great rest of your Thursday. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. All right.